We are 22S Radio. 22S Radio is 22SMedia.com and 88.1 FM, KKJZ HD3, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and now a world broadcasting tag team champions of the world and a cruiserweight champion. I'm Ethan. I'm James. I'm Rob. And this is episode 140 of Beyond the Ropes. We are BTR Pro Wrestling Talk. Of course, I am your host, Ethan, joined alongside the analyst, James Williams, and of course, producer Rob Flores. You can follow us on Twitter at RealBTR Radio, where we post uh, whatever we want, basically. Go, go, go yeah. there. Yeah, go follow us, sir, on Twitter. Facebook.com forward slash Beyond the Ropes. And of course, YouTube, just search up Beyond the Ropes. You can follow me individually on Twitter at EthanMV95. You can follow James at... At JHW Reporter. And you can follow Rob at... Rob Flores Media. Um, one, oh, I forgot one, one, one more thing here. Yes, it, it's here. It's what here. It the kind of look era. War Games, huh? Oh, you got it off the discount rack. It finally no, came I in. Huh? Full price for this, sir. <laughs> full price. Yeah. And there might be more coming. I might do an undisputed unboxing later on because I know that people mm. demand it. So, for our YouTube audience that are watching, hopefully we'll get some people to watch there. So, um, I, okay. I did another box over here as well. If I could get it over here. Um, nice, little, nice little box here. So the edge, okay, edge. Well, so, what was it again? What was the special edge box for? Um, it's just they just had stuff they wanted to sell, I guess. I know, but was it like a Funko or no? I, I do have a Funko, <laughs> but that's not part of the box. I might okay. show some of those items. We might have that unboxing later. I'll, I'll open it. Okay, the camera in a bit. So, uh, some stuff there, and of course, um, I mean, really was a sn- slow news week for us here. Uh, but I mean, let's talk about the big story, I guess, was an incident that occurred uh, last week mm-hmm. between former WWE uh, superstar, uh, Mickey James, uh, when she posted a picture of a trash bag uh, that said Mickey on it. Of course, <laughs> this came from, t- I don't know why you're laughing, James. It's just so crazy. It, it's pretty intense for sure. Um, so this is what she posted this on on um, Twitter and face uh, Twitter and Instagram, I should say here. Let's see if I can find the actual quotes. She wasn't very yeah. happy, that's for sure. Yeah, she wasn't very happy. You guys saw this, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, just checking here. Yeah. As I'm going through here. Basically, she, she wasn't very happy about the situation. Here she is. So, dear Vince McMahon, she even mentioned the boss there. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware. I did receive my WWE care package today. Thank you. Hashtag always blessed and grateful. Hashtag women's wrestling matters. And, of course, like I said, the trash bag with Mickey's name on it. Uh, it was quickly met with a re- response from Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Mm-hmm. Triple H had this to uh, say, upon learning of the disrespectful treatment, some of our recently re- released talent received on behalf of the company, we took immediate action. The person responsible for this inconsiderate action has been fired and is no lo- longer with WWE. Stephanie McMahon quote tweeted this saying, Mickey James, I am embarrassed you or anyone else would be treated this way. I apologize personally and on behalf of WWE, the person responsible is no longer with our company. And of course, the person that took the shot or took uh, the bullet for this was a uh, person involved in talent relations. I believe he recently got demoted, actually. Uh, he is Mark Carano, uh, of course, of t- Total Divas fame. The Total Divas fame? That's right. He's been in just about every season of Total Divas. He's the one always dealing with uh, the superstars there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, he was the one that took the bullet. He was re- released. Um, he had been with the company for quite some time, over a decade, I think. So he was there for a while. 
Um, but I, I, I listened to the, before we talk about this whole thing, I listened mm-hmm. to the Jim Cornette podcast on YouTube or the little clip that he, you know, talking about this. Um, mm-hmm. And he <clears throat> felt like uh, it might not have completely been Mark Carano that maybe they were looking to make some changes anyways. And it just happened to be yeah. a nice incident that Mickey James posted this. It was a way for them to basically clean out the talent relations department because they are, mm-hmm shifting things. I know John Laurinaitis has been back for a while, I think as talent Renate, uh, VP of talent relations. Um, right. I believe two referees were demoted. I think John Cohn was once again, re I think he got his spot back. Is that the Nicholas, the dad? Nicholas is dad. Cause I think he had lost it. He'd been demoted like a month or two ago, but then I think that he got it, the position back. Right. So he's right. going to be referee again, just, only a referee, but um, yeah. So um, they're they're doing a whole bunch of changes there with the, within the company. So Jim Cornette himself thinks there may they may, may have been something more to this uh, firing. But focusing on the whole Mickey James thing before we talk about you know Mark Brano and everything, um, that kind of sucks. I guess yeah. <laughs> apparently this has been done before. <laughs> Maria Maria Canellis uh, mm-hmm. replied. I think Gail Kim re- replied to that as well. I think and so Jillian too. Hall, Jillian Hall, mm-hmm. I believe. So I, I, this isn't a one-time, you know, an isolated incident. It looks mm-hmm. like this is just the way they've done it. Realistically, I don't think it's meant to be that way. I think they put it in the trash bag <clears> to protect whatever gear right 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 because you know stuff can get wet or whatever i mean yeah no no i mean it's you're you're right about yeah it 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 just comes off bad i mean you're already down bad has said yeah like i should stuff like that you're, you're already down bad being fired let go whatever and then you know the biggest thing so there's a few things with this thing for me was just like one, like, yeah, let's just get a bunch of trash bags, a box, and like, yeah, this is going to be a great idea, right? Mm-hmm. But two, that it's happened before. Um, obviously, you know, you, you listed some names there, and they were all female. I don't know if that means males never experience this after being let go, or maybe they just aren't out, outspoken about it, or don't care, or just didn't I mean, they, see it, might it that be, way. It might be a thing with the, their gear or their costumes or whatever, because... Maybe WWE well, sometimes keeps that. So maybe more, the women, you know, might have more um, that WWE keeps or something. So, like, that's a good point because I actually wondered, like, what was in the back? Because it's kind of like you guys are, I mean, maybe not so much now where you are maybe more in a, a steady, consistent place where you where a locker room may actually be a locker room for them. But everything is so temporary when they're moving from city to city. I'm like, you know, what are they really holding on or whatever. What, one thing I found interesting, um, looking at a video that Naya and Shayna posted uh, when they had the tag belts at WrestleMania, it was like, it, was, it wasn't, I guess it was technically a behind the scenes kind of clip. They keep the titles in the drawer, in, in, in like, a, um, like a set of drawers uh-huh. uh, um, that I found interesting. So if you're a champion, you kind of go, or I'm sure maybe in some cases, like Roman Reigns, someone else would go and check out the belt or whatever, because they don't carry the belts with them. I think back in the day, they may have had a travel belt and then um, an actual belt or like a TV belt. Mm -hmm. Um, So I found that kind of interesting how they kind of store that stuff. So I wasn't completely surprised that they would kind of maybe store some stuff that way. But, you know, I mean, it's kind of like per for each wrestler, like what are they really carrying or what are they? So I don't know. But now that you mentioned the costume thing, maybe maybe that's a good point. I know for like, I've seen video, I forgot where, it could just be like the documentaries or maybe even Total Divas. Um, mm-hmm. but like I've seen the robes for like Charlotte Flair. They have them in the wardrobe, kind of like the wardrobe. Cause they they right. travel with them. They have, I guess, a, a truck that will just carry certain wrestlers gear. I, I know John Morrison, when he returned, there was a video, they had his jacket. He never took his jacket. They They kept his <laughs> jacket. So like they brought it out when he came back right. and that's, you know, the one he'd been using. So they, I think they keep the gear and I guess if, you know, 
the wrestlers want to want it back or, I, or they just mm-hmm. decide we don't want to hold it anymore you know they well, send right. it back to them. i mean because because when you think about it i mean a john morrison coat a rick flair charlotte flair robe is like you can't travel in that. that's a duffel bag in itself just the the one robe or whatever mm-hmm. you know so that that stuff kind of makes sense you know so i i can see that um yeah it's just really an odd situation overall um I had kind of heard the same thing. I don't know if it was through based the Jim Cornette podcast, or whatever about um, them maybe just trying to find a way to get rid of Mark or Mark, not um, what who uh, Mark Carano. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I just think it's I don't know. It, it was just kind of interesting that it plays out. I think the biggest takeaway too is it can it shows you how powerful social media can be and how quick the company can move. Yeah. Um, no matter how big the company is. It was um, a kind of response from right to, to kind of do damage control. I, I don't know if we did get a Vince tweet. I, I'm like 99% sure Vince doesn't even know his password for the Twitter account. So it was kind of funny that that's who was tagged in it. Um, because Vince is the last person I would tag because I'm assuming he doesn't see it. Um, but yeah, Triple H and 70 moved pretty quickly. I think John Laurinaitis also tweeted something out. Um, okay. and then Steph, um, Mickey responded to uh, to Stephanie. Did you read? Did you read that one? No, I didn't. Um, Mickey's response, which was kind of almost like one kind of a parting jab on the on the way out there. If you could, if you find that 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 might be something you want to read. But um, inter- it was it was. I mean, you you some of the names you've mentioned we've seen back already at Jillian Hall. Uh, we haven't seen Gail Kim since then. Uh, what was the other Maria? I think you mentioned. Yeah. Maria Canellis. Um, you know, I mean, Mickey James is going in the Hall of Fame at, at some point in her career, or, or you know, um, in, in sometime in the next few years, obviously. But so it kind of sucks when, 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 when that happens. And, uh, you know, you're going to see all these people again. I mean, how can you not see these people again at some point? So, um, you know, I, I don't think it's, it's like really – cutting ties all together for Mickey James in the WWE, but I don't think it's good luck for everyone involved. And I think it is something that needed to be pointed out, but also I think it will also kind of show like, Hey, like, Oh, this has been a thing for how long? Like this is something that's, you know, maybe something triple H and, and Stephanie and Vince didn't know about. So if that's the case, maybe it'll kind of give them um, the idea to maybe look a little closer on some other things and how things are, are being processed and make sure there's nothing else more or less they can get caught up on um, or called out for. So just in that regard, I think, you know, there might be some other changes, you know, that we may not see announced or noticed, but um, yeah, there, there'll be some things that need to be uh, addressed, obviously with the way they kind of handle business on the way out, because I mean, more than anything, that's just disrespectful when that, <laughs> you know, again, like we mentioned before, you're down bad, you already got fired or let go. And then you, you know, you got that, um, the trash trash bag incident. Uh, Rob's in the chat mentioning uh, the belts that are apparently under Mark Carano's bed. Um, I guess his girlfriend decided to go on a rent because Mark Carano was um, trending and wasn't, in, and his ex-girlfriend wasn't very uh, fond of his name popping up or whatever. So she, she, or wasn't, isn't very fond of him anymore, obviously. So took it upon herself to share some stories on why she more or less hates him or whatever and mentioned that he has a whole bunch of belts under his ring that he has stolen from the WWE and the talent, you know, either when the talent is turning in belts or, or whatever the case is. Um, so, you know, and, and funny enough, we might see some of those either uh, on eBay or maybe just on in his personal collection after a while, why they're just all under his bed. I don't know. That's weird, but right. Um, this is a Mickey James tweet uh, mm-hmm. replying to Stephanie. She says, thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate that as I am equally embarrassed. And right there, I'm like, oh, like, that's great. Like, maybe they all kind of mended, you know. And then what else did you say? I know this, was, this wasn't a malicious act. However, it did feel very symbolic to how I was presented in the last three years. Boom, there's your shot. Um, my, my thing is, how else are you supposed to take out the trash, James? Mickey James is not trash, though. Mickey James is not yeah, trash. What a burn! No, but but again, no, like, it's I interesting mean, because I mean, did we did we get this from 
the iconics or anything like that like well, you know was i didn't hear anything of that maybe they don't want to bring it up or who knows you I mean, know what i mean the thing is mickey james has been around 20 plus years i mean mm-hmm. overall in business she's she's at the point where she's got nothing to lose she's gonna be going to the hall of fame and everything oh someone right like someone like billy k or jessica mckay i think her name is yeah and mm-hmm. uh, cassie lee uh, formerly Peyton Royce. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. they still got a ways to go. I'm, I doubt they want to burn any bridges or exactly, right. bridges that you know they have there. So, um, and they seemed, judging by from like videos from like Total Divas and YouTube videos, they seem very professional. I mean, on an episode of Total Divas that they appeared on, they wouldn't even have a, a drink, an alcoholic drink, because they just didn't think it was you know professional they, they were being good for them good yeah for they, them. they were like they, they took their work very seriously so um, that's cool i didn't know that that's that's kind of cool no that they they seem like very professional and you know respectable individuals so mm-hmm. um yeah no i haven't heard anything about them so i'm sure we'll see them pop up on tv very soon so mm-hmm. all right uh we're getting to the last three minutes here any final comments on the mickey james situation um, none on the Mickey James situation, but some other quick notes worth just throwing out there while we, we kind of get through the last couple minutes here. Um, it sounds like just based on some things I saw on Twitter, Terry Funk uh, had a, a battle with COVID. I guess he's, he's now recovering. Um, I don't know how old Terry Funk is anymore. He's looked the same for the last 40 years. Um, it's 104. I I, I, you know, he easily could be, I think he might only be like 80 something, but um you know, good to see Terry Funk's doing good. I know his body has been through a lot. So, um, you know, a lot of battles, like battles like that, you, you, you kind of have to be very careful with. So nice to see Terry Funk. It looks ideally to be on the other end of the COVID uh, uh, recovering process. Also, um, Steve Mongo McMichael. Um, yeah, Steve Mongo McMichael. I don't know if we mentioned him last week, but no. was diagnosed with ALS. Um, uh, probably more well known uh, in, within the wrestling industry for his time with the four horsemen and, and what he did in WCW with, uh, Ric Flair. Uh, what was that? Uh, Chris Benoit, D Malenko, uh, Arn Anderson and, and, and Mongo and, and Deborah was there at the time. Deborah McMichael, uh, married a stone cold Steve Austin, uh, later on down the road, but at, was them at one time married to, uh, Steve McMichael. Um, Steve McMichael was also in the NFL, most notably played for the Chicago bears. Did appear briefly in WWE, even before WCW, as far as that, as a part of that Lawrence Taylor angle uh, back in the day when Lawrence Taylor was going up against Bam Bam Bigelow and the way they set that up. I, th- I think it was a WWE superstars versus or, or a mix of, N- of WWE and NFL stars um, competing in a Royal Rumble or a Battle Royal. So I think Mongo was in that and might have been like one of the lumberjacks or something for that match with LT and Bam Bam Bigelow. Um, other than that, mainly a WCW guy, but sorry. Um, and well, and sending our well wishes here on the show to Mongo and his family. Um, obviously, a- ALS is something that um, is a very serious situation and, and there's no real um, uh, treatment or, or like some sort of uh, recovery for it. So, uh, yeah. Thoughts and prayers going out to both Terry Funk and Steve Mongo McMichael. Absolutely. Uh, when we return, we'll talk about another recently released uh, former WWE superstar uh, having getting some backlash on Twitter. And then mm-hmm. we'll also talk about WrestleMania backlash along the way. And another one that got released who's going to have his first match since being released. So mm-hmm. on that and more right here on episode 140 of Beyond the Ropes. We are 22S Radio. 22S Radio is 22SMedia.com at 88.1 FM, KKJZ HD3, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Welcome back to episode 140 of Beyond the Ropes. I'm your host, Ethan, joined alongside the analyst, James Williams, and of course, producer Rob Flores. Of course, we're doing this virtually via Zoom. Um, I think two-thirds of this, this group has gotten almost fully vaccinated, right? I actually go tomorrow. There you go. As of this recording, you will be fully vaccinated, I believe. Yes. Rob, you are fully vaccinated? Yes. Oh, good. I'm, I'm the outlier here. 
got to make my appointment here. I'm going to get it done soon. So. Yeah, uh, you got to get it done, mister. We've got to go on our, on our adventures here. Um, and we mm -hmm. eventually got to get back in the studio, hopefully. So. Yep. Of course, uh, you can follow us on Twitter at RealBTR Radio, uh, where I will occasionally tweet stuff, including a, a tweet that I sent out a few days ago regarding an incident that we will be discussing in just a matter of moments. Okay. Uh, you can also follow me individually for my own personal opinions at EthanMB95. You can follow James at... At JHW Reporter. And you can follow Rob at... Rob Flores Media, and don't forget to send Ethan some R2 DMs. Don't DM me, because I will block you. Um, of course, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Beyond the Ropes. Give that page a like. And of co course, YouTube, which is search up Beyond the Ropes. All right, let's talk about it. You know, we recently, I believe it might have been even last episode, it might have been last episode where we talked about the recently released wrestler, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it was. Okay, so I gave a lot of praise. Um, a, one particular wrestler, I believe you did too as well. Well, mm -hmm. via Twitter, I took all that praise back and anything uh -oh. positive I've ever said about this person. Uh-oh. Um, that's right. So uh, there was a little incident over the weekend. It doesn't sound little. Uh, I mean, it might be a little exaggerated, but... Uh, all right. You know, at the time, it was it was a little bit of a slap in the face to artists and anyone trying to, you know, freelance and make some money. Okay. Uh, Chelsea Green, former WWE wrestler, mm -hmm. WWE superstar, of course, uh, engaged to Matt Cardona, of course, okay. former Zack Ryder. Uh, so apparently, this comes from Salsa, at Salsa Boy on Twitter. This is his Twitter account. An artist. Okay. Uh, so this is his tweet. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess you guys haven't heard. This is news to you guys. But, uh, this is news to me. I, was, I found this, this trending. And, like She was trending on Twitter. Uh, this was like two days ago now. But anyways, uh, so this is what Salsa Boy on Twitter put. LOL. So Chelsea Green really doesn't want to credit me. It's cool that she deleted it after five days, I suppose. But like, who does this? I don't believe I'm out of line at all here. So basically... Uh, she had shared uh, like some fan art mm -hmm. that he had made, uh, and it said said it uh, it basically said now taking bookings or something like that. Um, right. And he had DM'd her privately, asking, you know, hey, can I, you know, I make money off my art, and he's not as he wasn't asking for money, uh, after, uh -huh. but in the, in the actual image, she basically just wanted credit. Um, and he, you know, he seemed respectful. I don't know what the context was before or after. Right. But mm -hmm. from the image that was shot, uh, she basically said, I just deleted it. So basically, instead of just giving him credit, she, she, yeah. just, she just deleted the whole thing. And of course, he shared this and the internet blew up about it. Um, and of course, I mean, you see a bunch of wrestlers share people's fan art. And you're always seeing them either retweet it or mention the artist. I mean, Penn Balor comes to mind because he's always posting on Instagram and he's always giving credit. So I don't, it just seems like a very, uh, I want to say, I mean, I guess tacky. Oh, and the worst part of it was after she said this, she blocked them. She did, but I, I went and uh, while you're talking, I actually went and <laughs> That's saw the it. worst part. It's not just that she just <laughs> said, I deleted it. Because that, that's fine. If you're not going to give credit, then don't use it. But then she blocked him right after. So yeah. Well, it's kind of just a, a, a kind of a tacky move. I mean, it, it, it kind of is. So someone even mentions down at the bottom, like, hey, um, like, you, oh, you should know that they're in character or not. But yeah, I'm like, I don't know. I mean, in, in character not, for she's what? Not I mean, she's not what working is, right like, now. What is she working? Like, exactly. She's not a heel. She's not a face right now. She's unemployed. Right. I mean, she is unemployed, you know, unfortunately, but like the point is she's not, how could she be playing a character? She's just on Twitter. She's got no gimmick as you mentioned. And so, I mean, it just comes off very tacky. Um, I, I rescinded my, my positive comments about her um, last week. I mean, mm -hmm. time will go by and whatever. But 
I don't know. I, I just kind of, you know, when you see an artist, obviously there are a number of artists that rely on their art, rely on freelance work and, you know, the credit and anything to make some money. It's just kind of insulting in a sense there. So I don't know. I mean, oh. it, it was trending on Twitter. And so mm-hmm. people obviously made a big deal about it. So we had to mention it here. I know she did uh, eventually reply. You did make a statement about this. So oh, did she really? Yeah, she made a statement afterward, after the fact. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, she kind of had to. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. It's kind of funny he didn't tag her in it, though. Well, she, he was blocked? Well, yeah, but still. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. Um, Let me find the the tweet here because I, I couldn't pull it up here but um she she did she did leave a statement and yeah i'm oh is this the rest of it or oh okay here it goes so this was a day ago uh so this is via chelsea green on twitter what's her her twitter account is i'm chelsea green so it's super unfortunate that this has been handled uh, I think artists deserve credit, period. After re- reading some of the nasty tweets, I didn't feel reposting the art was something that I should do as clearly the artist's view of me had soured. I support my artists. I pay my artists. I have been doing that since I started on the independent scene because I myself was a starving artist and I know the struggle. It's really sad that it, an oversight on my part has led to this, but I wish the artist luck and I think it's best that I stick to the artists who, have, who I have used in the past and who know the person that I am. So. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, especially if you know that's your first time working with someone new, like you would almost- the thing, I don't think she was working with him. With him. She just used his- he just used Right, his words, right. So. All this could have been avoided just by mentioning them or retweeting whatever the post was. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's a sticky situation. I mean, it's not like she, there's no way to really kind of justify her being right, especially by the comments that she made. She didn't really say anything where she's like, oh, he had said or whatever. Like, yeah, it's not like he didn't seem volatile or anything. He seemed, no, right. He just switched I, I, the credit. He asked for the credit for politely, and obviously mm-hmm. she, she handled it poorly. Yeah. <laughs> I just deleted it. I just deleted it. Locks. <laughs> I she mean, said, she. I mean, she basically gave him gave him the finger. That's basically. But I mean, but but so even when you do that, it was the Mickey like, James trash bag situation, James. <laughs> I feel like if you do that though, then like, I feel like you're almost if you react if you react that way, like what what did you expect to happen? Like, did you not expect him to call you out? I mean, let alone you blocked him after. So, yeah, yeah, so it's 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 a sticky ch- situation for sure. But you know, hopefully, I mean, mm-hmm. we'll see what happens. I mean, she probably will end up on Impact or AEW. I mean, I know Matt Cardona is on Impact right now, so and she did have a stint with Impact before her getting signed to WWE. So I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, speaking of Impact Wrestling, uh, they had a big weekend, and they're gonna have another yeah. one coming very soon. Uh, quickly talk, talking about Slammiversary, they teased another uh, the world is changing again, uh, much like they did last year when WWE released about a dozen no. wrestlers and they signed, they signed about half of them. They teased another one showing video footage of Samoa Joe, Mickey James, the Australian flag signaling the Iconics, of course. Uh, I believe Chelsea Green was also there as well as I believe Okada, who obviously is not a former WWE wrestler, but he's currently in New Japan. Mm. So, they, I mean, they, they got footage of a number of former wrestlers. So, Slammiversary happening, I believe, in July. That's when the kind of the 90-day complete compete clause comes to an right. end for many of those guys. So, they teased that. But, of course, this past weekend was also Rebellion where we saw a champion versus champion match between Impact World Champion Rich Swan defending against uh, AEW Champion Kenny Omega. And 
I've got to ask you one thing, James. What? Why is Impact letting themselves get buried here? You know, and I really don't know. I don't know what, uh, what, what's know. the end game? Because well, the ratings, the ratings aren't doing much better than they were a few months ago. I was going to say, we don't know what the rating is for TNA, and I don't think we will because it's like a private company or something. They're not public. So I think we'll never really find out. I oh. think Jim Cornette talked about it, but like the, the pay-per-views weren't doing great either. It's just kind of like this was a match you knew where Omega was going to win. Uh, it makes you wonder why, what they're doing. I mean, yeah, it looks great. Omega has three titles. Um, it was kind of interesting to watch and try to juggle all the titles and like they're falling on the floor. And I mean, they're standing in the middle of the impact ring, but uh, oh, you can see Callis kind of putting the whatever other belt he had. Uh, yeah, so like over the, the TNA, it, they made it seem very irrelevant even after he won it in their ring. Yeah, so he had the AEW title, and then you mentioned the two titles, it's not just one, but they had right. the original TNA impact title. And then the newer one, I don't know why, why it was necessary oh. to have both those titles. Because uh, of the Unify from Moose, right? Yeah. They're but trying I'm like, to get out of that hole. You just need yeah. one. Um, Rob mentioned Ring of Honor next, uh, possibly. I was thinking potentially NWA. I mean, they yeah. might do a whole thing with Kenny Omega where he goes around every company, tries to win. Because they're obviously trying to make him a, a big deal. Um, but... Again, I listened to our good old friend, Jim Cornette's podcast. Mm. And he's like, well, that, that zombie promotion, Impact. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's lasted somehow for 20 years uh, through thick and thin. I mean, it's Sounds not really good. the last, you know, we've gone through the last, what? I think he went through the, like the last 10 Impact World Champions and hasn't, yeah. been, hasn't been as great as it once was. Mm-hmm. I'll just back to the competitors that have, you know, been the champion. But I mean, there's a certain point where it doesn't really elevate Omega to anything. He won the Impact title, which again is not like a primary title anymore. Not like it was ten years ago or whatever. Even then, it was still kind of like, well, it's an Impact Wrestling title, right? You yeah, to, it just you go to NWA and it's also not. I mean, it's got the same lineage, but it's also not the title it once was in the 80s. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, it's just weird. I don't know. Because you're, you're, it's, I think when you give it uh, someone who's really not in your company the title, your company's title, there's a lot of trust there. But then, you know, he wins all these titles. What is he going to do to lose all these titles now? Like, whoa. You know, is he going to loop back around everyone and then drop them all? Or that's the thing. I, I, I never see how, how these all end, you know? You never, re- other than some sort of unification, but you never really see how someone holding five or six belts ever, you know. I remember Ultimo Dragon had six or seven belts and he would come down to the ring and he won the Cruiserweight title, but then they either said they unified all the belts or whatever, and then he was just back carrying the one after a week or two. So, I don't know. It's just weird. It's just weird. I don't. I don't. I don't get the whole thing. Is this going the first, with it. Is this the first sign that? I mean, you predicted it. AEW's buying Impact. I mean, it, it's the first. It's that. I mean, that's what they could be doing. They just unify the the titles. But yeah, but too, if they're gonna do it, then why they would have said it by now. I mean. Again, you know, Rob's saying in the chat to build someone, but you for every title he wins, they have to build someone that can beat him for the title to bring it back to their promotion. You know, um, I don't think there's anyone in Impact right now that could. I mean, I don't know. There's no one in Impact. No, I mean, not really. I mean, Moose, maybe Moose, I get, but, but then it's like, it's just, are they really gonna build a, like you know? It, are they going to put someone over that in the, and it's going to be someone that they can actually build around or like, you know, again, it's uh, just how important are these titles? That's why it's hard to really, it looks great for a photo op or whatever when you have all those titles, but when you get down to it, you're like, you know, it, 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 he's going to have a Japan title, but he's not going to be in Japan for six months, whatever, you know, it's like, it's not going to carry the 
same prestige that it, it would um, otherwise. But again, that's why, you know, titles just aren't built up the way they used to be anymore. Even in uh, WWE, when you have a world title and a um, universal title and, and everything else, there's just so much stuff going on that, you know, you never really know, or sometimes it's hard to keep track of who the champions are. So I don't know. It's interesting. We'll see where it goes, but I'm not buying too much into it uh, as it being some game changing storyline for, for uh, impact or AEW, honestly. All right. It's enough Kenny Omega talk. He's putting us to sleep, James. Look at that. We're both yawning over here. Um, talking about yeah. Omega. So AEW and impact got me yawning. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about our tribal chief from the range really quick. We haven't mentioned them. Your obligatory uh, mention here. Um, okay. I mean, as we're recording this, this Friday, he has a match against Daniel Bryan for the universal championship where Daniel, Mm -hmm. if Daniel Bryan loses, he will be banished from Friday night SmackDown. Now, as we're recording this, this match would have already happened. So I'm just going to say it here. It was nice knowing Daniel Bryan. I hope he enjoys retirement, you know, because our, our tribal chief isn't going yeah. anywhere. I mean, it's kind of been mentioned, though, too, if he is going to retire. So, we'll, I mean, we'll see what happens there. Um, yeah, I don't think that would be the end of Daniel Bryan. I think I, we're, we're kind of getting near the end of Daniel Bryan. Like Rob's mentioning in the chat, maybe it can lead to a NXT move for for Daniel Bryan, something similar to what we've seen with Finn Balor, who did lose the title at the last takeover and is expected to actually come back mm-hmm. uh, sometime soon. I believe he kind of teased it wow. on social media today. So we'll be getting Finn back pretty soon, and we'll see what happens with Daniel Bryan. Absolutely. And you speak of NXT. We, we can't not speak about NXT and not mention our favorite wrestler on NXT right now. Um, active wrestler, of course. I'm talking about L Cor- A Knight. Say it with me, James. Oh. Not Corey. L. Not not Corey. What's his name? Grimes. Is it Corey Grimes? Cameron Grimes. He's all right. Cameron Grimes. Whatever. He dropped out to million dollar man. Did you see that? I did. I did see the million. Dollar. I was more than happy that the million dollar man made an appearance. But we're gonna go to a commercial now. We gotta pay bills. We're not all million dollar mans here. But you're right. No, 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 no. When we return, we're going to talk more Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, and everything else right here on Beyond the Ropes. 22 West Radio is 22 West Media.com and 88.1 FM KKJZ HD3, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Welcome back to episode 140 of Beyond the Ropes. We are BTR Pro Wrestling Talk. Of course, I am your host, Ethan, joined alongside the analyst, James Williams, and our producer, Rob Flores. We are doing this via Zoom. I uh, hope you're all staying safe and getting vaccinated. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter at EthanMV95. You can follow James at, at JHW Reporter. And you can follow Rob at Rob Media. And Facebook.com forward slash Beyond the Ropes. And of course, YouTube, just search up Beyond the Ropes. Uh, let's talk some numbers, James, right? Yeah. Got some numbers. Um, from the April 20, 20th edition of NXT. Or 20. Um, April 20, uh-huh. Um, 841,000 for NXT. Uh, which is a bigger... Well, yeah, if they're on their own, they better have a bigger boost. So it's a better number from what they were when they were sharing time on Wednesdays with AEW. Um, obviously, AEW did stay in that Wednesday time. Wednesday showing and time slot. Um, on TNT, um, and they're they're you know they're still holding over a million this week. Uh, this week again, uh, or for the April twentieth edition, one point one million for them. So Ooh. AEW is winning the war, Ooh. whatever whatever day we're calling it now. Ooh. But um, are those bluebirds over there, uh, Ethan? Um, you know it. it you know, now we're going to get to the point or there's going to be conversations where we start talking about, oh, is NXT now going to need to go back on Wednesdays and therefore kind of help chip away at, at that AEW number to bring it down? Because you're getting to that one that one million mark. Um, I think Raw is normally doing maybe like a 1.8 or something like that. So the next thing, the last thing 
WWE is going to want to have to hear about is, oh, uh, AEW is reaching the million plus mark, catching up to Raw, for example. Um, SmackDown had two million, I think. Did it? Okay. Had like two point four. I think they were. Yeah, they had the highest rating, especially Not- the eighteen to forty nine demo that everyone loves so much. Yeah, and well, <laughs> that and, and then you know, and then you you talk about on a Friday night, especially now where people are getting out more um, and things like that. You know, who who really knows if they're what what they're making out of the of the numbers or like the the shows being DVR'd and watched later and stuff like that. But I mean, hey, if, if SmackDowns can can pop a rating on a Friday night, um, I think that's pretty good. You know, a good little two hour show. It's not that three hour uh, marathon. So maybe that's kind of helping, you know, but you know, they got some good guys, some good things going on over at SmackDown with obviously with Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns being there. Um, Edge being there and, and Daniel Bryan, etc. So, you know, they got a talented group over there. It doesn't surprise me that they're getting over two million. Speaking of Edge, uh huh. Let's uh pop this this bad boy open, shall we? So you haven't opened I thought you opened it. I did open it. I do know what's inside. Okay. I wanted to save it for Okay, wait, wait, wait. So did you I know think... what was inside when you opened it, or is it a surprise yeah. to you too? It's not, it's not a mystery box. Um, so we do know what's inside here. Okay. Yeah. So it's more of like a bundle. So nice little packaging there. Mm-hmm. Got some R rated R there. Okay. Um, again, there's a kind of edge right there logo. Yep. Uh, it's his newer logo right here on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Have a t shirt. Okay. Let's get a. So. Stuff here. We got a we got a totally positively awesome five second pose pin. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's kind of cartoonish, right? So that's five second pose on the bottom there. That's so cool. It's like a Polaroid right there as well. Yeah, that's cool. We got some Edge uh, sunglasses here. Okay. We have the Edge logo there. There. there you go. Very nice. Got a little edge kind of little figure. You say sand. Oh, that's cool. What is that? Yeah. Kind of sand there. Is it like plushy or is it? Oh, it's like a it's like a vinyl. It's like almost like a vinyl. Uh-huh. It stands huh. on a vinyl. You know? It could stand, I think. Well, it's wrong with my hand, but you know, I could stand. That's cool. I didn't know they had that line out. That's cool. They didn't. I don't know. I think it's just for the box. Oh, okay. Uh, this is probably my favorite thing on it because, you know, I wanted this shirt when it originally came out. Never got it. This was over a decade ago. It's in beanie form. It's got that logo on it. A decade ago. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's like the, the box cover over here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got an Edge poster. Okay. I haven't unro- unrolled it, but there it is. You can kind of see it. Yeah, it looks good. You take Edge with you wherever you want to go. Or just keep him on your wall. And then a nice little bag there. Is that like a koozie or something? It has something inside. A little baggy. Oh. Dice or something? Alright, <laughs> yes. Oh. Is that like a belt buckle? The Reddit R spinner. Um, I don't know if it's a it might actually be a belt buckle now that you mentioned it. Hey, it does spin a little bit. And so you didn't know you were getting that? I did, but I didn't really pay attention much to it. So Yeah, maybe you didn't think it was going to be as like a elaborate or as, you know. That, no, that still makes sense, though. Very cool. And then the last thing, which is obviously the main, I guess the main thing here, is the t-shirt. Okay, so you gotta have a T-shirt. Obviously. As you know me, mm-hmm. I'll take it out of the packaging here. So that's a pretty good little bundle. I mean, they got a lot of different little knickknacks in there for you, and then they they hit you with the poster and uh, the belt buckle, and then you get the shirt. I mean, all they're missing was the mouse pad. You could have had a good little mouse pad in there, maybe, but right. we're not complaining. There okay, it it's a nice shirt, nice black shirt. Got got love the gray. black shirt. It gray. Looked, okay. It looked black, but it's a nice gray shirt. I'm glad they went with the gray. A little different. Gray's good. 
I think he does, yeah, I think most of his shirt, I feel like he's kind of a, he, Edge himself is kind of like a gray shirt kind of guy. I think some of his shirts have been. Yeah, some of them have been gray. So like, it's this, not most of them. Design, most of the ones that I think was I could. Was yeah. gray. Um, so there you go. I'm starting to think most of them were gray. He has some. He has some, yeah. Then I got another package here. Well, um, the Santa came uh, a little, little early for you, huh? Um, yeah, but before we get into that, there's something. Oh, here we go. I, I promised an undisputed unboxing. Come on now. It doesn't mean we had to get excited about it. <laughs> Come on now. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. The dog tags. I've held off on these on a while for a while. That's about all that's left of the undisputed era. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Um, no. getting this. And then here I got the, to match with the hat, I got the armband. I had the, the old armband. already, the classic one. I had okay. to get the War Games one. So there's a little undisputed there, of course, along with this hat I already wore today. Mm -hmm. Quickly, where's my Nexus band, Rob? Sir, I don't think they have them on WD Shop. I was going to say, did you have one there? I didn't have a Nexus band, no. Mm, okay. Eric, is there on NXT? I don't know. Yeah, you know, it could happen. It could happen again. Uh, but let's see what we got here. This little package arrived a little bit later. Uh, because You uh, get all the packages. Is this all really your mail? In. That stimulus check, you know. I guess. <laughs> that stimmy hit, and, you know, I had to uh, take and it back. And, and WWE just takes your money. Absolutely. Well, you know what? I had to get one of these. Come on now. No, oh, there you go. Is that the iconic tags there? The iconics right there. Um, but of course, I didn't just get one. I got three. Of them. Awesome. Awesome. So um, I get to wear all three at the same time. So that's iconic of you. Uh, no, you guys will each get one whenever awesome. we're able to. I'll wear it proudly. Whenever we're able to see each other in person. We might never see each other again. No, this might be it. We might. It's in, this might just stay a Zoom audio show or video might show. Might be. But perhaps the biggest and most important item of this entire collection here. A Bret um, Hart poster. I don't think they make those, and for good reason, they would not sell. That's not true. Yeah. Acknowledge me, okay. Uh, your your chief Roman Reigns. Our tribal nice little t-shirt. Of course, it even says it here. It's a list of accomplishments. Look at that. That's Hall of Fame worthy t-shirt. Speaking of um, achievements for Roman Reigns, five hundred days total, I think. Um, as uh, world champion, or, or I think world champion and universal champion. I think it's either his last two runs or how did they phrase that? I know he's reached 500, 500 days as champion over the last two title reigns. We'll put it like that. That makes sense. Because, you know, yeah, so, going to beat him. So. so he's had it for a while. He's had it for a while. Um, so, yeah. Interesting little note. Where with the, I'm, I'm not sure where he stats of all time. I mean, that's, yeah, when you start getting to San Martino, you're talking about years, but. Anyways. Oh, he's going to surpass San Martino's record. Well, uh, two, though, San Martino, most of that was all in one run, though, the year-long. Oh, well, he's going to have it for about eight years, too, so it's fine. Well, <laughs> all we'll right. maybe he'll lose it at uh, Big E. I don't know. I don't think so. The way B Big E's going, I don't know. Yeah, our trajectory here, sir. Uh, let's talk about WrestleMania Backlash. Let's talk about the WWE Championship, which has now been made into a triple threat match between Bobby Lashley of course and has. against Drew McIntyre versus Braun Strowman. What is going on with Monday Night Raw, James? It's a mess, and I don't know. I don't. It's all falling Why apart, Braun isn't it? Strowman? I it just it doesn't it doesn't it do makes anything sense. to me. It, do, it doesn't make any sense. Like, the Braun Strowman thing is like, you're never going to put the belt on him anyway, so it doesn't matter. He might take I don't it. know. <laughs> it, it's, 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 um, 
you know, I mean, they're just doing some interesting stuff. I, I'll give them credit. They're trying to get a little creative. Uh, Rand Jordan and Riddle are on Raw, correct? They're, that's RK Bro. I appears, like that. Appears to be, a t- you know, they're wrestling one night, and then um, I didn't really catch the whole storyline story line on how it happened, but now they appear to be on the same team. Is that the thing? I know he was having some issues. Riddle was having some issues with Bobby Lashley. Um, I don't know if Randy Orton is there for protection. Do you you know anything about how that kind of happened? I mean, the last episode of Raw, I actually didn't see because it didn't Mm -hmm. record on my DVR, unfortunately. So I kind of went through just the highlights. Basically, they had a match. Riddle defeated Orton with a roll-up. So I guess I kind of earned a little bit of Orton's respect and he had mentioned about teaming, I guess, via social media or during Raw Talk or something with Randy mm-hmm. Orton. Of course, the name RK Bro kind of went out. So I think they had some interactions on Twitter and it okay. led to them kind of teaming up. Obviously, Orton being Orton was very uh, careful to really team with a uh, real. Right. Um, but they, they were victorious over Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. And they picked up the victory. They're not completely on the same page just yet because Orton was, you know, when they won, he didn't really celebrate with Riddle. Right. But uh, he's kind of getting getting acquainted to Riddle for sure. So, uh, I mean, this is probably going to lead to a feud potentially. All right. Do we see Randy Orton barefoot at some time during this feud? Oh, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay. Uh-huh. Just asking. I'm just, hey, I'm just here to, to ask the questions the people – uh, may want to ask themselves or would want to know. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's for sure. I agree. I think that's an important question. I mean, uh, he's he is wearing RKO on his track on his trunks again. Mm-hmm. Not wearing, mm-hmm. so he changed up his trunks a little bit. <laughs> I mean, he's me. he's kind of open and experimenting with some different, you know, just some different yeah. things as he finishes out his career. Uh, I don't know about the barefoot thing, though. We'll see. We'll see. You got 10 years, he said. He wants to do it for another 10 years. So I think I did hear him say something like that. I mean, if he could do it, do it. I'm all for it. Um, let's see what else. I mean, we got T-Bar and Mace, formerly of Retribution, unmasked. Yeah, but... They got to lose those names, right? I mean, yeah, if you took it, took it away, if you took the mask and stuff away. I mean, it wasn't. it was never really a mystery as it was. So. Kovic and Dio Manning, come on now. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, the thing is, they both been on like TV before. I don't think Jakovic had ever been on main roster TV. That Jakovic, no. But so, I know, you but know, but uh, yes. So yeah, he was even on the broadcast thing. I mean, you. And then what do they say? They're not in the uh, hurt business either. But no, they're kind of. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they're aligned. If so, that becomes a reveal later on or something. I just don't like it. I, I I think they need to kind of drop it maybe after the next match or whatever they're trying to get to. Just because it's weird when you're surrounding Bobby Lashley with more big guys. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you When you have him with the Cedric, you have him with the Shelton, people who aren't in his uh, world championship standings or, or whatever, someone who can actually be competition for that belt. Um not that really Mace or T-Bar are world title contenders. I just think they're too big. Like, you're trying to protect Bobby Lashley by using two guys as uh, – I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't do much for me. It's kind of it's kind of weird. I mean, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with them there. Um, mm-hmm. They're doing a thing with Charlotte where, I mean, she's Charlotte. It seems yeah. like, I mean, she, she was suspended – as of this recording, two weeks ago, she yeah. showed up last week, uh, apologized to the referee that she physically abused, um, and then she made him apologize for making a mess up. So it kind of defeated the whole purpose of it. Um, you know, so Charlotte's go- doing this to get some dental work done or whatever. Why didn't they just wait to bring her back? I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like whatever sort of dental appointment she's having was not something that was scheduled a week in advance, you know? So it just makes me curious why they did bring her back. Was it to try and pop a rating or to get a new storyline going? Or 
I don't know. Again, she kind of looks different as it is to me. Hey, hey, hey. Jim uh, Cornette. Jim Cornette was defending Charlotte here now. I mean, yeah, I know. I'm not saying anyone's right or wrong. She can do whatever she wants. It's just... Come on now. Don't be a Dave Meltzer now. I'm not. I'm just... No, 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 no. For me, it's like... Sir. I just... It was just so sad. Because, the thing is... It, it she is, has had some work done. <laughs> so, yeah, but... Yeah. Well, um, the thing is, is, is we thought she had COVID. That's what we thought. I and never was said. Anymore. So, so, so that's why it kind of rubs me in the wrong way. She and, and and no one said that's what really happened while they said she had COVID. But she may have had COVID. So I'm not dismissing it. But I know facial surgery. You know, you get it, whatever, and it it takes maybe a little bit more time to recover or whatever, just from the time she. I don't know. I just. Hope they didn't use COVID as an excuse for her to get it the same way. And now they're making it a uh, suspended angle just so she can get her teeth done. So, I don't know. I guess the question is, is she going to the same person that did Roman Reigns? Well, he has a beautiful smile. So, Oh, no good. doubt. Uh, Pearly White. Uh, I mean, the know. tribal chief has to look good. You know, the head oh, of, of the people. You know, you need to acknowledge him. If I can get the shirt up, acknowledge him. Um. As, Look, I, go ahead. I said, I said the man's teeth. I said his teeth were great. I don't, I don't know what more you want from me. I mean, acknowledge him as your tribal chief. He has great teeth. No, as your tribal chief. As Ethan's tribal chief. You know, I'm trying to help you guys out here. Mm-mm. You know, week in and week out, I'm telling you, you guys need to hop aboard the hype train from a range because it's leaving really quick. Quick, you missed a stop at WrestleMania. That could have been the, that could have missed been the time. That could have been the last stop. That may have been the last stop there. Right. Now well, it's gonna be an ongoing train. There's no more stops, and you guys are too late. I don't want you guys coming six months from now saying, "Oh, we're on board now." No, it's too late. I'm trying to help you guys out here. Uh, real quick, as we, as we kind of end the show here, um, one thing that I felt interesting, and maybe you have a quick comment on it. It uh, looks like Andrade is gonna get back in the ring. Um, you know, since his release, he's going to begin in the ring in oh. Texas with Alberto Del Rio, um, a former WWE champion. So we'll see uh, where they go with that match and, and what happens. I don't know what promotion that's supposed to be part of, didn't, but uh, I know there's there's supposed to be a match between those two. Didn't uh, he kidnap someone? <laughs> Charges were dropped, I may, guess. They have mean. been dropped, but who knows? I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> we'll talk still about weird, still it's a weird, weird situation. Weird. Um, but until next time, uh, this has been episode 140 of Beyond the Ropes. <laughs> and this episode has been absolutely too sweet.